We now come to one of the most important parts of the swap, the cooling system. Um, I'm just going to zoom in and show you all of the components um, that provide cooling for the engine. So we have two radiators, one for the left side, one for the right side. And um, they mount to the frame rails using these nut certs. They're just uh, these little threaded nuts. You drill a hole, put this in, and then this little ribbed portion actually clamps down onto the frame and provides a suitable um, anchor for a, for a, a fastener. So we've got the tools necessary some sort of marking paint um, for your bolt hole. Uh, we've got two different uh, um, drill bits, one for the nut cert and one for the um, just the bolt that's going through. Um, some locations don't require a nut cert. Let's take a closer look at the uh, radiator. These radiators are from a 97 Honda Civic uh, they're they're pretty small radiators, but in combination, they do they do great. So we have the inlet side here from the Subaru engine comes in here, cools down, and then out here goes to a crossover pipe, which then connects to the right radiator. And you can see they're kind of angled, so it, they complement each other nicely. And then uh, this then swings down to the thermostat housing in the on the engine itself. So these radiators have a radiator cap. These caps are 16 psi. So you want to get a radiator cap at the filler um, that's slightly lower. So the stock Subaru is 13 psi. So uh, these will not go before the stock or the 13 pound uh, radiator cap will. Okay, it has these other mounting ports and I'm gonna show you how to uh, use these on the left hand radiator to block out uh, some of the airflow so that it goes directly through the radiator here. And there's a drain plug on this. Uh, we're, you know, we're not gonna be using this, so I just leave it capped. So next I'm going to show you, you know, approximately where they go in the in the bus. So here's the engine bay with the radiators placed. Um, we have the left radiator here and the right over here. And um, they fit perfectly in the engine bay back here. So what we're going to do is take our marking paint and actually um, mark where we're going to drill our holes. And once we do that, um, then we're going to drill and uh, put the nut certs in. The nut certs have been uh, inserted. Um, so what we're going to do now is kind of take a closer look at the actual prep for the radiator. Uh, so one of the things that you have to be conscious of is that once you pull or put the radiator in place, um, you'll have to actually remove it to access the back panel here. So that goes for the other side as well. So what I've done is uh, made sure all my wiring's good back here, made sure any plugs uh, are accessible in case I do need to access them. There will be a small gap that you'll fill with foam, but uh, for the most part, this will be inaccessible un unless you pull the radiator. So one thing I forgot to mention um, in the previous detail of the radiator is that uh, these tabs here were actually um, put on separately, so they were welded on. Um, now if you just go out and buy a 97 Honda Civic radiator, it's not going to have these tabs. It relies on uh, this locating uh, nub here and uh, and over on the bottom as well. So, you know, 
you're going to either have to uh, weld these on or or you know I'm offering a kit so you can buy them from me but um, you know this will be cru crucial in in mounting that radiator unless you want to try and fabricate your own bracket and then what else I've done is actually install the uh, radiator fan so the pigtail is down here and this is the right side fan so I've got it down below the left left side fan I'm going to actually have the pigtail going uh, on the upward side but uh, it just attaches using these um, these springs and uh, they're basically like wire ties after making sure that uh, the pockets um, behind the rear lights are um, taken care of, all the gaps are filled, uh, rust holes, things like that, um, I installed the radiators and uh, installed the fans on them as well. Um, it's easier to install the fans uh, if they're out. Uh, just the attachment method, they're kind of like uh, zip ties. Um, and then I spread some foam around them. Um, basically, they're they're ready to go. Um, so we'll just zoom in here, and you see the inlet here. And I'm still playing with the foam a little bit. I mean, it's got some some give, so I'm going to be working on that. But this here is the inlet to the first radiator. So it'll go from the outlet of the engine into the input on the radiator. It'll come out of this uh, port here. And it's actually going to go to this guy. This is an inline radiator fill um, T. And it has a radiator cap that goes onto it. And then if I come down here, you can see got a cap here this one here is 13 pounds the ones that are on the radiators are 16 and I've got a crossover pipe and this crossover pipe is just going to link to um, the radiator on this side so um, if we zoom back we can see that the radiators actually fit into the engine bay really nicely so here's the left side radiator. Um, the fans are in place and here is a cooling baffle that I spoke about. Um, it's here to, to block a lot of the uh, airflow that would normally just rush right out and force it through the radiator. Thanks for joining on the cooling segment of the Busseroo video series. The next segment is going to be Bussery Part 6, and that's going to detail preparation of the Subaru EJ22 engine. Um, in this case, we're going to take a look at how to prep the engine uh, for placement into a bus. So follow along, and um, we'll see you soon.